Hey guys, how you doing? So somebody sent me a little, I don't know, message that a Google engineer put on LinkedIn, so it's public, so I'm going to put it here. So uh, let's jump into it. All right, so let's just read this here. As a software engineer, you don't need to know everything. So before I read the rest of this, everything that we're going to see here is what I've been talking about for years, for years. I did not know any Linux commands when I started my first job as a programmer. When I joined Amazon, I did not fully understand Git. At Amazon, my first project was in Python, but I had never written a single line of Python code. When I joined Google, I could not program in C++, but most of my work was in C++. Later, when I changed teams, I built a feature in Dart, but never used Dart before. As a software engineer, you don't need to know everything. You just need to know where to find it and when you need it. So there you go. Something I've been talking about for years and years and years now. I always say the language is not important. It's not important. My Ruby joke, if you've ever been watching my videos, I make fun of Ruby all the time. I'm not actually making fun of Ruby. I'm making fun of the notion that the language is important. It's not important. It's not important. I know a lot of you young nerdlings out there are going, how could you say the language is not important, Steph? All these YouTubers with at least six months of experience on YouTube, these 21-year-old influencer experts, uh, they're telling me that this is so important, React is so important, or JavaScript is so important. It's not. Everything I've been saying for years and years and years is born out with this guy here who worked at Amazon and worked at Google. It's not about the languages. It's about your ability, your ability to be a coder, to be a developer. That is the key. It's like, um, I'll use a boxing analogy because I used to do, uh, I used to box a little bit. It's not about the gloves you wear. It's not about the shorts you wear. It's not about the shoes you wear. These are just tools. It's about whether or not you can box. Same thing with driving, by the way. It's not about the car that you drive. It's about how good of a driver you are. And uh, yes, we'll have our preferences. Some of us will prefer this, and some of us will prefer that. Some of us will prefer JavaScript. Some of us will prefer Swift or Python or PHP, whatever, except for Ruby. And don't get caught up in the languages. Get caught up in becoming a pro developer. Learn to write pro code. So you could take a great developer with five years plus experience, and put them on any language, and the quality of that code will be superior to the person who's only done two years of coding. On average, right? All things being equal. The professionalism of your coding has nothing to do with the language. You can write amazingly pro-level code in Perl, and you can write dog crap code in C++. It all depends on your ability to code, not the language. That's why when people ask me, why don't you teach TypeScript? Why don't you teach uh, React? Why don't you teach Node? I don't need to. Because in my training courses, I teach three programming languages. I teach S, not SQL. That's not a programming language. I teach JavaScript, Python, PHP. But more than the languages, I teach pro-level development. I teach people to think like a pro developer. I teach people how to structure code like a pro-level developer. These lessons are 100% transferable to all software development. Once you understand how to be a pro developer, you can be like this Sahil Gaba guy, uh, Google Amazon engineer, you will be able to pivot from language A to B to C with no problem. In a previous video, I uh, cited a post that somebody made under one of my YouTube videos where he said that he had tried learning React after only having spent a few months on JavaScript and he couldn't get his head wrapped around it. So what he did is he fell back to basics, just started building websites, starting doing some PHP, some JavaScript vanilla stuff. 
And he did this, making money for about nine months. And he decided to revisit React because he had a job opportunity. And to his surprise, he learned it in about a day. Wasn't an expert, but he was able to start doing basic things. Why is that the case? Well, because once you understand how to be a coder, regardless of the language, once you understand, you build things, once you build things, you understand by building, then all these other technologies, learning new languages, new, learning new libraries, is not such a big deal. Remember, here's one of my principles. Comprehension comes through application. Write that down. Comprehension comes through application. What does that mean? That means you understand by doing. I learned this actually in martial arts. I started doing martial arts when I was about 10 years old. Started with judo, then did, did some Japanese karate, then taekwondo, then catch Campbell, and uh, a, little bit of, a little bit of Muay Thai, and all kinds of different things. Wrestling, judo, I did judo, yeah. Anyway, so I did a bunch of styles. A bunch of traditional styles, or eh. But you know what? Even the, the weirdest and the least effective traditional styles, I was able to draw some interesting uh, lessons and understanding from them. So even in, with some really useless traditional martial arts, I was able to gain some knowledge. So anyway, I did all these different types of martial arts. And what I found in practice is that one street fight, one you know, actual altercation in the street, was worth months and months of training. And there was every time I fought, at least for the first several, I found my understanding of combat in general deepened quite a bit. And this real world experience formed a lot of opinions about actual combat. Then I became a bouncer in a nightclub, well, years later. I became a bouncer in a nightclub, which was my last job as a uh, working for somebody. Uh, so I was like 18, 19, 18 through 19. And so anyway, so I had a job as a, as a bouncer. And that experience in big group situations, uh, sometimes we had group fights, uh, beer bottles and chairs, that continued to form my opinion. And it changed the way... I trained, it changed the way, what I emphasized, what wasn't important, what, what, what was important. This is something I notice that we see a lot in all fields of study. And what we see is that people concentrate on things that are not important. Yeah, that's key, especially in software development and coding. There is so much out there, it's unbelievable how much information we have out there. There are so many languages that it's hard for a beginner to know what is important. What do you really need to know? So one of the myths out there is that math is super important in development. It's, it's silly. 99.99% .99 of programming, math is the, one of the least important things there is. Like I've been writing commercial code for three decades now, and I do typical business apps, and I've, I'm trying to think of the most advanced math I've ever done maybe modulus or something. I don't know. If you know how to add and subtract, the occasional once every year to multiply, divide, that's the extent of the math skills that you need. So when you hear these people say, oh, you need to learn math, these are just people who don't know what the hell they're talking about. The only exception is if you're building a gaming engine, maybe doing some advanced AI research, big data analysis perhaps, but that's about it. Every other type of development, math is the least important thing. So if you're math challenged, don't worry about it. For 99.99% of jobs, you won't need math. Another huge myth is algorithms. Ooh, you gotta know algorithms. No. <laughs> Again, algorithms is one of those things that fall in the 0.01% the, the category of development. It's not important. And there are libraries that you can access for most algorithms if you ever come across them. In terms of efficiency and application, another big Here's another big myth in software development. Ooh, my apps have to scale. They have to scale. No, scaling is not an issue for 99.9% .9 of development. The only time scaling becomes an issue is maybe if you work at Google and you got to process, you know, teraflops of data. I don't know if that's a word, teraflop. 
you got to process a lot of data. For the vast majority of business apps, the uh, bottleneck, the bottleneck in terms of uh, runtime speed, that means as the app is running, uh, the bottleneck is database access. So if you have a properly structured database, and typically it's going to be a relational database, and you know how to write efficient queries and know how to effectively write queries. So for example, I don't know if you're running an e-commerce store and you, somebody comes to your site, Amazon or something, and you got to download, you got to display all the, uh, all the mouses that you have uh, available for sale. How you query the database to grab all that mouse information to present it to the user on the page, uh, how you do that, um, how you write that query has to do with some, you know, uh, do you pull out all the records? Do you pull out 10% uh, of the records? It really depends on the query side. It depends on a bunch of factors. So that's where the speed optimization really comes into play is understanding how to logically write a good query. And it's not just a technical execution in terms of how efficient your, your SQL is, but in terms of, you know, it's just strategic, really. It's, it's strategic in terms, okay, how much should I pull out? What are we typically looking at? Blah, 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 blah. You know, do we, you know, do we do a caching layer or not? Again, caching is, for most people, are not that important. Anyway, the point being is that there's so much emphasis on stuff that is so marginal, meaning not that important in the software world that it, it wastes so much time for people. <laughs> it wastes so much time. At the end of the day, if you want to get into the development world as quickly as possible, you have to concentrate on what I would call the key fundamentals. Once you have your fundamentals, then you're ready to jump into the game, into the game and like that Google engineer, you will find yourself learning new things on the fly. And it's not a big deal. Trust me, once you have your fundamentals down, Learning new technologies, new languages on the fly is no big deal. So the big mistake you don't want to make is to get caught up in tutorial hell where you're being pulled into, you're being pulled in many different directions because this nerd says, you got to learn this, you got to learn that. You want to get in the ring. Like me, when I wanted to learn how to fight, actually getting into actual fights was far more important than me trying to find the next school or the next teacher. The fights were so much more uh, effective in terms of pushing my game forward. That's how it is with uh, coding. The more real code that you write, that's not doing school projects, but real code, the far quicker you're gonna become a good developer and a competent developer. So if you take anything away from this video, number one, don't learn Ruby. Number two, if you want to learn how to fight, get into a street fight, don't do it. Number three, learn your fundamentals and get out of tutorial hell. Just start writing code. Don't worry about knowing everything because there's nobody out there who knows everything. It's impossible. Like I've been doing this for decades and I can tell you is I forget much more than I currently remember. But I don't care because I know that if I needed to learn a particular language, I would just learn it. It's not a big deal. And in fact, in my last few years as a freelance developer, I had no expectations about what language I would use for a particular job. I would just go into the job, I'd look at the requirements, and then I would choose the technology accordingly. Sometimes I would use something I was familiar with. At that time, I was doing a lot of Java. Other times I would learn some weird funky language that was very specific for the particular job at hand. It was no big deal. At first I was resistant to learning new languages because I was like a zealot. I was a Java zealot. That's a sign of a noob when you're like, oh, only this language is good. That's a noob. But when you get more mature and you understand the lay of the land and you go, okay, I'll learn this weird stuff here and I'll learn that there. Ah, this job, Python's probably better. This job, Dart may be better. Yeah, this job, I'll just you know do a little PHP. The only thing I won't do is Ruby. Hey, I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in the ways of code, freelancing, personal finance, a whole bunch of other things. Essentially, I teach you what I've learned over the last three decades as a developer and entrepreneur. And I pass that on to you guys, like any good uncle should. 
There's an old expression, if only I knew then what I know now. If only I knew then, when I was much younger, if only I knew then what I know now. I would go back in time, I'm Uncle Steph, I would go back in time and say, Cousin Steph, don't do this, you're wasting your time. Do that, uh, turn left, don't turn right, that kind of thing. So my idea behind this channel and my mentoring program, Shameless Promo, Uncle Steph, UncleSteph.com, I just try to transfer my decades of experience to you guys, to make it easier for you guys. You know, one of my uncles was very uh, helpful to me in terms of life advice, and so I'm just passing it back. I'm Uncle Steph, I'm here to help. So if you have any questions, any disagreements about anything in this video, please uh, post them below. All right, cheers. Oh, code long and profit.